Minerals Commission of Ghana. Tony. Thank you very much. Uh, the challenge that I have been given is to uh, look at how to facilitate sustainable uh, small-scale mining sector. I mean, how the Minerals Commission will do that. And uh, in doing so, I will look at a few areas. I will uh, give a, a bit of underscore the importance of mining and small-scale mining to our society. And then uh, I will look at uh, some of the challenges to formalization. Why is it that uh, small-scale mining is still a challenge in this country? And then um, we'll look at the, the efforts being made to formalize that sector. And then uh, look at uh, legislation, licensing effort, management strategies, and then look at the way forward. Now, as you know, Ghana is a, a mineral resource rich country. We have, over the years, in fact, in, in, in excess of 100 years, been mining gold. And, and when we say we have been mining for over 100 years, it is just a formal mining. But prior to that, long before then, very critical ornament in our culture. So we have been mining long before formal mining took place. Um, when we talk about minerals in Ghana, quite a lot of them, um, you know it better than I do, the gold, the bauxite, the diamond, the kaolin, the limestone and all that. Now, um, interestingly, in terms of commercial mining, we have restricted ourselves to just about four minerals, gold, diamond, bauxite and manganese. So when we talk about mining in this country, we are always talking about these minerals. However, we have other minerals that we've mined in smaller quantities, the, 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 the quarries, the, I mean, the granites, we have been mining limestone. In fact, lately limestone has become a very critical uh, mineral. I don't know why for a long time we're not making good use of our limestone. Um, uh, people are looking at feldspar <coughs> and all other minerals. And as you also know, a few years ago there was airborne geophysical survey that sort of uh, brought out some key minerals that we have previously not paid attention to. As for iron ore, we have always known that we have iron ore. I mean, some of you know about the Opomancy or iron ore deposit, uh, also the Shaney deposit, and then the, there's another one in the Upper West area, which I'm sure you know. But beyond that, there are other minerals that need to be properly mapped to uh, um, manganese, we have only 5%, some say even 3% coming from those three areas. So our dependence is largely on gold. Now, in, 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 since 1983, Ghana has received investment in the mining sector in excess of 17 billion, which makes it the number one area where foreign direct investment has gone. We have the mineral sector has attracted more uh, foreign direct investment capital than any sector in the last uh, uh, three or so decades, which is quite significant. And uh, we are aware of our production structures. We we be the number uh, one in West Africa, two in Africa. We oscillate between nine and eleven in the world. So in terms of gold. Ghana is, a, is, is quite a, a key area. Our small-scale mining sector has also been playing a good role. Um, until 1989, mining by Ghanaians in small scale was outlawed. It was illegal to be found mining for gold. You know, um, until only as recently as 1989. However, that did not stop Ghanaians from mining. And those of you who come from Takwa and Pristia and Obwasi area, there's a, a word that you, you dread in those days. When you hear scatter, <laughs> everybody will run away because the police will be coming after you. So scatter was not a very good word. And then now we have we have kept this word galamse for a long time. It also used to be called keshe. For those who are from Baboso, Takwa, you call it keshe. And keshe, I understand, is a Hausa word which means kill it or something. So, so you know, in spite of the, um, uh, the fact that it was outlawed, people still did it. And 
uh, government also at that time realized that Togo is not a producer of gold. Ivory Coast at that time was not producing any gold. Yet they were exporters of gold, which meant that Ghana was producing for them because we had banned it. People who didn't illicitly had to uh, uh, export that in a, in a, in a, you know, behind the law. So government thought that no, we couldn't do that. And so a law was passed to allow for small scale mining to take place. The same law, or well, an, an, an adjacent law, if there's a word like that, also created a uh, legitimacy for the use of uh, uh, mercury. So in, in, in 1989, these uh, laws were very significant um, in terms of what uh, the country was doing. Now, but having said that, since the, the, the legitimization of small-scale mining, you see that in terms of production, it started from almost zero, you know, to 19, in 2016, to the extent that gold production, the small-scale mining, was in excess of 1.6 million ounces. In fact, our latest confirmation, the data we have confirmed, is close to 1.6 million ounces. Uh, when government produced, I mean, when the total production was about 4.4, uh, small-scale mining alone produced close to 39%. We've been using figure 38, 31, 34%. But it looks like uh, they, are, they are doing much higher than uh, uh, 30, 34, 31%. Small-scale mining sector contributed close to 40% of our, um, you know, of gold production in Ghana. So they are a very significant part. Now, the challenge is, unlike many other countries, Ghana has the law allowing for small-scale mining to be done. So what is the sin of government for saying the thing that you were doing it illicitly, now come to the light and do it legally? What, 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 has, what is the wrong, what has God, the, I mean, government done wrong? Yet, you see that a large proportion of people who undertake this business choose to do it illicitly. So that's the worry. We have laws that have people. So sometimes when people say we should regularize it, we should legalize it, we should do this, I wonder if people understand that this is legal, it's regularized, there are regulations. And in Ghana, in fact, I, I have been involved in small scale mining issues for a very long time. Even though I've been, I've been working for large scale mining. Uh, my, my interest has been in small scale mining. Even when I was with Goldfields, I represented, uh, I was the chairman of the ICMM, their small scale mining committee. And I'm sure some of you know ICMM as a major global institution that looks at um, minerals and metals. And so I, I understand a little bit of that. I also worked with the, the there was a World Bank, DFID uh, project that they called CASM has a community at is not small scale mining. And uh, they, 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 you know, I was part of the strategic management advisory group. So I got a little bit of insight into that. Now, you realize that, that there are fewer countries, in fact, until recently, there are very, very few countries where small scale mining was actually allowed to be done legally. I was part of a team that went to Mongolia and the, the, the government there at that time said, no, 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 we will never, uh, you know, regularize small-scale mining. And then we advised the government that it is better to regularize it than not to. In Ghana, since regularization, we now know how much gold we are producing. And it has increased over the years. It has, especially since 2004, it's been increasing to the extent that now we are talking of 40% uh, um, uh, uh, coming from that sector, which is quite significant. So, but the question is, why? Why are people still doing it illegally? And, and, and we, we need to always understand that the problem of small-scale mine, mining, in my view, is a problem of illegality. I mean, in a large, in a large measure, it's a problem of illegality. Some of the issues that people raise have been, one, there's lack of geological information. So people do um, try, so they will very, very dig. And then uh, they, if they don't find, they just go. I mean, if I dug and I didn't get anything, why would I cover it? But if a large scale mining dug and they didn't find anything, they are bound to cover it. They must cover that. They must uh, try and rehabilitate that. So 
that, that is one problem they, they raise. Another legitimate problem is lack of finance. So for the lack of finance, they are forced to deal with uh, uh, foreigners, they are forced to go into debt and all that. They also raise the issue of uh, uh, you know, the complexity of getting your licenses. So because it's complex, uh, I, I will not even obtain the license at all. And so I'll do it illegally. And then of course, people also complain with uh, uh, connivance of few traditional uh, leaders, but few traditional leaders, you know, very few ones, <laughs> who are, who are uh, also conniving with them and then making their job uh, look beautiful, even if... Uh, now, in spite of all these things, there have been efforts to address these challenges over the years. I just want to, and I, sometimes when I say this, people are, ah, no, I say that the problem of illegal mining in this country, and I was telling the media now that when you see anything illegal, it means the law has to be enforced. The person is working against the law. So simply, if we were able to enforce the laws, maybe, maybe you wouldn't have the problem. Because it's like, when you, uh, give you an example, you know the highway, the one we drive on, the 50, 120, the thing that the, the speed limits are the, who, 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 who sent that thing there? It's the Ghana Highway Authority. But who inspects that people respect the, the speed limit? I'm sure you know who does that. Um, DVLA gives us licenses, you know, to drive. But I have never seen DVLA persons standing by the roadside checking and see if you have a, a proper license to drive. So we need to always distinguish between regulation and legal uh, uh, enforcement. I think we haven't done that, and we have always confused the two to be one. Regulation is providing the rules of the game that will allow for proper, uh, in the case of mining, proper mining to take place. So when you regulate, you want to make sure that people follow the rules. And then uh, if, if you come for a license to prospect, you will come with your program and say that uh, I will do this, I will, I will do diamond drilling, I will do reverse circulation, this, that, 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 that. And then, so the monitors will come and check whether you did the diamond drilling that you said you're going to do, that you did the reverse circulation drilling that you said you're going to do. You said you're going to uh, have some 10 <coughs> trenches. Did you do that? So the monitors, and did you do that according to environmental requirement? This is what the monitor will do. The monitor may see people doing illegal mining and then inform on the normal scheme of things. Inform law enforcement. There are some people infringing upon the law. So law enforcement act. And sometimes it doesn't happen that way. And it is not only in mining. No. Uh, I'm sure you know that it's not only in mining. If you, if you don't know, let me tell you one of them. When you drive, where, where do you go to Makola area? The law says no street hawking. That is the law. But you see street hawking. The law says don't cross the light when it is red. The motorbike people, please, when, they are, when you are here, when I go, please don't disturb me. They, they, will, they will cross that. And sometimes they cross that in the full glare of somebody who is supposed to stop them. You know, I have been in a country and I have been personally involved in this. When I crossed a red light, it was red, there was no car coming from here. There was no car coming from here. Yeah, I'm a rational human being. So I, I walked across. Then, then uh, come. Why did you cross? <laughs> well, and it's like I was stupid to have seen that it was red and I crossed. So the law went. Here, if the law would act, somebody will come. Oh, <laughs> this is my brother. So he's helping me and, uh, and all that. So I think our, the way our laws are not working is probably one of the biggest challenges that we need to um, uh, address. So I, I say that there have been serious efforts to, to support them, including the legalization. When it, uh, earlier it was illegal, now it's legal, but now we have problems um, uh, you know, making sure that we obey the laws. So in Ghana, the, 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 the regulations about small-scale mining, they're very simple. Very, very, the, the law says, the law says, 
small scale mining is reserved for Ghanaians, and that you must be more than 18 years. You must have a license because the law says any mining at all, because you know it, that minerals are not for us. They are not for you as individuals. They are for the state, and it is held in trust by the president. So it is the, the, in, a, in, a, in a way the minerals belong to the president in their raw state, you know. So um, they they say you can do it. You are a Ghanaian. We have given you the chance to do it. You can. Uh, uh, you must only be above 18 years. If you are below, you can't do it. You must um, have 25 acres. These are the key things that 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 is required. And then before you, and then there are a lot of laws around it. And I always say that mining is one of the activities in this country that is heavily regulated. Uh, uh, Akebe will tell you, Dr. Edu will tell you that the kind of uh, licensing processes that they have to go through before you see a Sanko mine working, it, 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 you will not believe it. Yesterday I was talking to some politicians and so, but this is what we can do. I said, if you see a mine operating, they have spent about 10 years working in the room, <laughs> moving up and down, the Minerals Commission moving up and down, the EPA moving up and down, the Water Commission moving. So for me to say that, it's a, a big complex. And the land that you work on is not for you. If the minerals belong to the state, the land belongs to somebody else. So government cannot just issue a license. If you say it takes too long, government cannot just issue a license and say, go and work on it, when they haven't found whether the owner of the land sort of agrees to that. So it cannot be a two-day licensing process. But even that, there has been effort over the years to make licensing easier. Um, not long ago, there were no district, district uh, minerals commission officers. The minerals commission officers were, it was up to the mines department, were in Taprade, Accra, Oda, and, uh, and, and Takwa. I know, I mean, Takwa moved to Taprade. Okay. Yes, and uh, Akutia. Yeah. So that was, the district, that was the mines department, the inspectorate division, if you like. That was it. But now, we have about 12 districts where you have district small-scale mining offices there to help people process their applications. So at least the issue of distance and complexity has been effort uh, to, to try and uh, slow, slow it down. Um, we have also done some prospecting. In fact, as I speak with you, um, some significant uh, acres of land, I mean, I think uh, 150 acres covering 4,500 square kilometers have been explored and parcels for small-scale miners. And you know when you say we explore, you, you understand it better than I do. The cost of prospecting is very high. So government does that. And I came to the commission and said, me, this one, yeah, I, won't, I won't understand. When government does that, we shouldn't give it for free. We should ask them to pay something so that we can continue to prospect for other people. Ask things tight now, you do the prospecting at higher costs, and sometimes based on the money that the life state companies pay, we do that, and then somebody comes, takes the money, I mean mine, and will not even pay taxes. So it's not fair, but this is, the, this is what it is. And, and the key point here is that uh, government is trying by, to the extent that they are even prospecting land and parceling them out for uh, proper small scale mining. So these, and then a lot of training exercises go on for small scale miners. Um, we have arrangement with the UMAT for training for small scale miners. We have worked with um, some operators to form national associations, small scale mining associations. In fact, all the areas where mining takes place, you have the uh, local small scale mining. So this all goes into the formalization of uh, small scale mining. Uh, uh, small scale mining in the country. Now, previously, there have been other efforts to enforce the law. I'm sure 2013, you will remember, and in fact, proud to that, every government that comes attempts to use some force to enforce the law. I mean, if you, if you look at the history uh, uh, since legalization, at any point in time, government will come, because once you see it, it becomes very worrying and you want to do something about that. And then, uh, so we have had that, and then uh, we have not been able to sustain. 
you know, the 2013, we did that, and that was not sustainable. Um, the reason it was not sustainable, many and varied. Um, so part of which is also the issue, and please, I always say this uh, because we need to say, sometimes the issue of politics come in. Um, you know, an action will be taken, and then the other party will say, ah, this is not good, this is actually, they are our own people. It is just law enforcement. If you understood that we are enforcing only the laws and not taking it against any uh, individual acting out a living, I think it will be easier. But the truth is that we have all the, 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 the mixture of people who either knowingly or unknowingly do these things. We have brought in foreigners. And the law is very clear that it is from Ghanaians. It is a praise of Ghanaian. So sometimes I say that as soon as you see a foreigner, whether he's from uh, Yugoslavia, Papua New Guinea, Burkina Faso, China, or anything, you go and arrest him if we're a law enforcement country. This is small scale mining, there shouldn't be any foreigner. So once you saw a foreigner or someone that you suspect, in fact, we have to be careful too, but there are some Chinese who are Ghanaians. There are some, it is true. There, yes. There are some Papua New Guineans who are Ghanaians. So, and I'm not, I don't want to, uh, you know, just uh, settle it on China. Well, we, we keep talking about Chinese. There have been Americans who have come to do uh, illegal money here and gone back to America. Um, yes, when they went to, to, to the Discovery Channel, yeah. sold their story. So they made double money out of us. They got our gold to pay their debts, and then they, they filmed it to show how easy it is to do all this. So it, it is something that involves quite a number of other countries. But my worry is that that shouldn't have required any question. If you saw a foreigner involved in small-scale mining, and you are law enforcement agency, don't even ask questions, just arrest the person. The person would now have to show whether he's a foreigner or not. If you, if, you, if you saw people mining in water bodies, the law says you can't mine water bodies. So if you saw people mining in water bodies, you don't even have to find out whether they have license or not. It is very clear, arrest the person. Let the person produce a license. We haven't done that. So um, I sometimes think that if you, if you put angels in regulation, and you are not ready to enforce, the angels will do what the holy people do. But the non-angels, they will do what they do because nobody will arrest them. So that's the, that's the so so the I have said that uh, uh, small scale money is for Ghanaians. Uh, I mean, from our policy, in fact, from policy, written policy, this is what we said we, we are going to do. We will also assist them to improve upon operations. Government will continue to ensure that the use of safe and appropriate. This is what our national policy on mining says about small scale mining. And then if you look at the laws, these are all the laws that regulate mining. And beyond that, as I said, the qualification to, to do it is just a citizen of Ghana, you have attained uh, 18 years. So if you saw a, a child working in a mine, don't ask the child why are you working? Arrest the child. The parent will come and, and, and then. Yeah, yeah, because the law is saying that it's for 18 years and about. Unless the child not, unless the child says that, look, you see me, it's more like that. <laughs> now, this is the way, and I, I really want us to understand this. And I'm, I'm presenting this from a Minerals Commission point of view. I'm not biased at all, very objective. But I'm answering some questions. Because there are some people who think that. The Minerals Commission should have done some things that they haven't done. Yes, and uh, so these are the things that we haven't done. We haven't educated the public well enough. Um, min licenses are not issued by the Minerals Commission. Anyone who says, the Minerals Commission has given me a license to mine here, that person is lying. Because the Minerals Commission never issues licenses. We advise on licenses. I mean, we, we, we tell minister, minister, we have gone through all these things. We think you can, uh, uh, you know, issue the license to the minister uh, to the applicant. The minister can say that I won't issue because we think you didn't do a good job. But if you look at the license, those of you who have applied for license, we say the minister acting in consultation, no, on the advice of the, no, on the recommendation of the minerals commission. So we are also somewhere there. Now, 
but the, the minister can say, we will not, I will not issue, but he has to give reasons why he won't issue. You see? So that's the first thing. But we are part of the process. Again, once you have the permit or the, risk, the, the license, the license itself does not allow you to go a mine. Um, you need EPA permits. You know, you need to have convinced the EPA that whatever you do, you will remediate the, the environment. And then, apart from that, even the permit to dig, the right to dig, you need a special permit. These are the three key uh, uh, permits or licenses that you, you, you need to get before they get. But there are some people who, once they get the license issued, then they start mining. It's illegal. Again, um, well, these are some of the short-term, medium-term uh, areas that we have been doing. If you look at uh, uh, this one here, yeah. I've spoken about the effort to support small-scale miners. Um, we have done this geological investigation and then giving them out. We, have, we block areas. We ask for big companies, when they do their exploration, they have to shed off areas. They do. When they shed off, sometimes we identify areas that are amenable for, to small-scale mining. And we block that for small-scale miners. Um, we also think that it is not only mining that we should be doing. We are an agricultural country. So for those who cannot do mining legally, you can also do what Ghana is blessed more to do, which is farming. And for, for, for now, we've done about 23,000, that is for Minerals Commission, 23,000 acres of uh, oil palm uh, uh, farms in the, in, the, in the western region, in the Bogoso area, Pristia Muni Valley area. Uh, we are doing a similar project in the central region, uh, precisely in the Ayamfori area. So far, we have about 10,000 acres ongoing. For, for the communities there, if you are interested, you bring the land, the government will support you with oil palm, with technical assistance to go into farming and make money. Because the gold that you mine, it's not the gold you need. Even the large scale companies, they don't need gold. They need the cash. So they will mine for gold and export, they will sell. So if you are getting the money, if you are going to school for education, for after education you want to get education, and if you are getting the education from here, maybe, now, um, I've spoken about the enforcement side, the tax force in the past, which I've tried and not uh, gone high because of our own problems. We've also supported the formalization of associations. So we have the Small Scale Miners Association. We have district mining committees. See, the law says wherever there's mining, there should be district mining committee. That will be in charge of supervising mining in the area. So for all the mining areas, it is actually the district administration that should look after mining activities in the area. So what we do as a commission, when we see illegal mining going on, we, we write with maps or the, with clear description to the district administration that we have seen people mining in this area who do not have license from us. We have, um, those of you who have watched me speaking on TV, I've read some of the letters. And I've also read some of the responses that we have received. I remember we sent one to one district and we, dis we, we, we described uh, the number of people. We said five people, ten of, uh, we have 45 people, 10 of them were foreigners and all that and all that. Then we got a reply that, can you give us the names of the foreigners who are, who are doing the illegal miners? I read it on TV so that people will know what we have been doing. So it's a responsibility that we are also all not not uh, 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 adhering to. So we have all these things. We are going to, we've created district mining offices and all that, so let's, please let's go. And um, national security, I've been looking at all these uh, areas. Uh, the commission has run programs for judges, for them to understand the, the laws and practice of mining. There were times where some judges and police said, you know, they didn't understand the mining laws and all that, so we did that. So these are some extension services that we give, um, education on uh, mercury, bookkeeping, um, you know, some uh, methodological work, try to prepare them for processing, and then, um, I mean, the metal work, sorry, and, and all that. So, so we engage those who are legitimate. We cannot engage those who are outside the law. When we write, 
will write to those who we have their address. If we don't have, then they are breaking the laws and the law enforcement must take up. Uh, some of them do good job. It is not all small scale miners who do bad jobs. Uh, some of them, they, they do and they rehabilitate the, the grounds. I've visited some of them myself. Um, now the recent effort being made in uh, the last uh, few um, months, I think government has gathered courage. I think this is one of the things that, that, that have been lacking in our politics. We, we, we often don't have the courage to do the right things. Courage to do the right things. So I think uh, government now has mastered the courage to say this is wrong, let us stop it for the benefit of the entire society. And that is, that is uh, where we are now. Um, we are going to enforce the law. Um, we are not just going to enforce the law. There's also a program that will provide alternative for those who move out of the mainstream mining. And then uh, we we'll, 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 we'll think that this is where Ghana is likely to address the, the, the challenges of illegal mining. I think it's a challenge of enforcement. I think it's a challenge of all of us. We should not look at it as government responsibility because when the waters are destroyed, when the water, it is not government alone that will drink. And if you are, if you are not careful, government will not even drink the, the, the destroyed water. It will be those who are living down who will be drinking that. So it is a fight for all of us. It should not be fight for one person, one party, one president, one minister. Calab says you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> from you, what is being done in the law to take care of the hotspot situation between mineral rights and then land ownership? And then I'm looking at maybe a possible amendment to the law to include Nanano in the processing of the license. And then can we have some specifics as to institutions that are supposed to monitor the activities of those who have sought for license? We know there are people who are operating with licenses that have overlived their purpose, a new renew a need the renewals. I want to know please what's been done about it. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. CEO. Ghana law must be changed. Gold the boiling point is one thousand six hundred. There are plenty of technologies to do it. If you say we get gold and we sell, we, we, we get only money. That is not right. We must change the law completely. There is secondary tertiary and uh, four to the power four ways we can use gold in this country. We don't have to do only the primary and then just leave it off. Those who have been here for 3,000 years taking gold, you know what they are doing in their country. If you go to World Gold Council Gold website right now, there are technologies they are using gold to do and different, different things. So change your law. For instance, I work in Obuasi from January 84 to... <laughs> Thank you. My name is Kofi Ba for Don't Fred. I'm with Angolo Nashanti Obuasi. Apparently, when the illegal miners besieged our concession on the 6th of February last year, I was the one who was able to go through the whole thing. What I realized is that most of the guys who met underground during the uh, during the exercise, they do that just for money. After that, they don't know how to use the money again. <laughs> I don't know if the commission can help them because certain places when you see the grid they are mining, almost 900 grams per ton, carrying it along. But looking at that 900 grams per ton, about first about. Two, two grams of it. If you sell the amount of money you will get, but two, three days, you come back again. You will misuse the money. And looking at where they were working, when it talks about hygiene, safety, mm. it's zero. Yeah. Where they work, excuse me, say that's where they shit. Mm. That's where they smoke. That's where they do everything. So in terms of health, why total zero. <coughs> Those things, are there. I don't know how best we can help them. Thank you very much. Well, I hope that's it. Uh, this one question. I want to find out whether they have actually taken advantage of those training facilities. Well, Doc, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start from the. Yes, yeah, some of them have taken advantage of it. In fact, uh, I have personally witnessed uh, some uh, going through some of the training. And uh, you might have designed very simple 
a very important uh, curriculum for them. And uh, those who are interested, they have been going. I also know that just uh, last um, last month, government announced the training of about 1,000 potential small-scale miners. And they've already started going to UMAT for that training. So some of them have been taking advantage, the serious one. But obviously, you have a large mass of them, also you know what to do. So that's the response for that. And then the use of the money. It's <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> uh, the commission has a limitation. Uh, I totally agree with you. Um, some of them get a lot of money. You see, in those days when they were doing cachet, uh, you go and you get small amount, you weigh it by blade. Today I got three blades. I got five blades, or I got uh, five shillings. This was the language we were using. Uh, this day, is they talk about kilos. You know, in two weeks we got one kilo, two kilos. The language has changed, the production amount. And as I've indicated to you, if a country's small scale mining sector is able to produce 1.6 million uh, ounces of gold, that was the amount produced by the entire country in 2000 and uh, I think 2004, 2005. So, so you can see that for the big, the gold fields and Anglo Bulls and when they produce it, the combined production was that. So big amount is being produced. But again, this is where maybe some other group would go into such education. Abroad, when someone wins lottery, when you won the lotto, is that the lotto people who come to talk to you? The investment people, they will come and tell you, the money you have won, we want to invest it for you. Sometimes they tell you, I have won my money, so what? You don't tell me what to do with it. But I think we need, I agree with you, we need to have some education on how to manage our resources. That even goes beyond the small scale miners. When we do resettlement, sometimes we pay good compensation. I've been involved when I was working at the mine. You pay good compensation, the person will be fighting you to the nail, get the money, and before long, the money is gone. Some of them use that wisely, but not too wisely. Some will put big house in the village, saying that I will rent it. And the village house, I have a house at my village. Uh, it's 20 CDs a month or something like that. <laughs> so, so you invest all the compensation money in building that house, and then in a month you become a pauper. You know. So I agree with you, but I don't know whether the Mineral Commission will have to take up that responsibility. Uh, uh, you know, I think we should prepare other institutions to come in. The financial people, the business people should come in into this area. The certification. I think Minerals Commission, that is our desire, that um, we'll be dealing with people who are certified practitioners. But we cannot set up the institution that uh, uh, you know regulates that area. That's why WIM is coming up, and it's a good thing for us as a country. That's why a few institutions are coming up and insisting on certification, and we will support the, the initiative of that nature. Uh, my, my brother who said that it's not only for money, I totally agree with you. Um, but there are some people who produce, and all they do is to sell. Um, I know that big companies, they don't process the gold. They mine and then they sell. Other sector would want to take it up and process it. Nothing wrong with that. And in Ghana, we are seeing that. We have some refineries coming up. We have, uh, uh, in fact, we have some jewel operators also coming up. When I was in Goldfields, we supported School of Jewelry, the College of Jewelry in Accra. We bought gold and gave it to them for them to process and sell. So there's nothing wrong with that, and we must encourage that. But for those who mine, they are at the stream or at the level where they mine and not interested in processing. You must not necessarily be interested in processing once you have mined. You want to sell to the processor. So the value chain will go on. We will require your ideas. Because you see, sometimes when you have brilliant ideas, let them out in a way that people will listen to it and consider it. Uh, we all have our own ideas, and our ideas may not be sacrosanct. Sometimes what we think is very, very good, 
may not be what other person also thinks. So it is good that you share your ideas on yeah, the yeah, forum. Yeah. So thank you very much. Um, the, yeah, the, the last question was actually the first question was the the, um, the process of getting the license and the involvement of chiefs. Um, let me let me not call them chiefs. I, let me say traditional leaders. Uh, for just just to be very uh, uh, careful here. Now, when a license, when someone applies for license, whether large scale or small scale, what we do is that after looking at all your documents, we send the application. There's something we call publication. Something called publication, and uh, the publication would seek um, comment. Now, the way we do it, rather than go and paste things around, the Minerals Commission would not necessarily know who owns that particular land. So we send it to the district administration. The local government is supposed to know owners of the land, may have land maps, traditional maps, and all that. So we send this letter to them, or the application to them, we say, tell, ask the owners of the land if they have comment. So before a license would be issued, any license that would have been issued would have received a response from the district administration saying there's no problem. We did a publication, there was no problem. We cannot proceed. Practically, we can't proceed with a processing without, without uh, receiving that publication, which we expect that they would have gone to talk to the traditional leaders and all that. But let me be quick in saying that we have observed one thing that some of them don't do the publication well. They don't go and tell the, those they have to tell. And i give you one example. Um, we did the publication. I received a letter came to me saying oh, everything was right. Now, the letter was dated 17th June. Eh? The, the, the letter on the, the, on, the, on the right corner of the letter, 17th June. But the stamp, the received stamp by Minerals Commission was 22nd May. <laughs> Do you understand it? The letter was written, forward dated, and then we got it earlier than it was written. <laughs> then that, that was a, 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 a clear evidence that you know, the, 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 the person just wrote the letter. Uh, to us. So we have seen that. So we've changed it. We are now gazetting it. We are now pushing for even um, review announcement and all that so that there will be uh, more transparency in that. And then the uh, renewals. It is true that some people may have had a license for a long time and they've been renewing it. Because ordinarily, you have, uh, for recording stances, for one year. And it can be renewed for a maximum of three years. For prospecting, you get it for three years and it can be re re renewed for, uh, I think, uh, up to uh, nine years or so. Now, once you do that, it's, it's quite, because you must actually justify your request for renewal before we will consider that. I, we noted at a point in time, in fact, when I went to the commission, one of the things I observed was that there were some people who have had the prospecting license since 1993. And I went to the commission 2014, 1993, and the, the company still had the prospecting license. So those of you who would recall, we immediately put out a, a moratorium you know, a 90-day moratorium for us to look at all the licenses. And so we did, some of them we canceled, uh, we made them available for prospecting, uh, for prospective investors. So that we tried to do. Um, so it's, it's a challenge. Now, the, the way we are trying to solve it is to digitize the cadastra system. We have, in fact, digitized all our maps. We started last year, we, I think we completed just this month or so. So now all the cadastral maps have been digitized. It is now possible for you to sit at home, uh, and it's not an official announcement yet, uh, to sit at home and, and, then, and then check on available land. And we are actually linking it up. So we are thinking outside the box here. We are linking it up <laughs> to the, 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 what do you call it, to the finance people, the Ministry of Finance. So any payment that is paid on the ground that has been received will reflect. And our thinking is that maybe we should make it open for those who want to see how much money is going from uh, a concession 
you know, what money has been taken from that so that everybody will see. We have done that. It's now a read-only document. We want to get to a point where you can apply. You don't have to come to the commission. You can apply. Even though we have made the commission nice, it's beautiful to come there, but we don't want too many people there. So you can just apply and then we'll do it uh, for you. And the reason why we have delayed in even announcing this is that we want to extend it to even small-scale mining center. Digitize all the small-scale mining licenses. Thank you very much. All right.